Hey there, it's Michael Morgan here from Lathrop High School, and I'm here to offer you some advice on how to approach the written questions for the College Board's AP History tests. Now, there are lots of good resources and videos about how to write the various written questions for the AP World, AP Euro, and AP US tests. However, I thought I would provide some of the tips that I give my students that I don't really see in many of these other resources. Now, my AP students have a standing average pass rate of over 90%, and most of that separation from the other classes in the United States comes in the written question section. So I thought I'd help provide you with some advice on how to approach and succeed on those various written questions. Now the document-based question or DBQ is a question along with seven documents that you have to read and analyze and you are provided 60 minutes to do that reading and writing. Now they provide you with 15 minutes ideally to read and analyze the documents and 45 minutes to write and obviously the goal here is to maximize the writing portion and minimize that reading portion. Now while I will explain how to get each of those seven points for the DBQ, much like the LEQ, I'm going to give you the piece of advice that I think will help you out the most going forward. And that is singly this, to ignore the language used by the College Board, whether you got it on their website or perhaps from your teacher, ignore the language that they use in their rubric and their explanations of the rubric. They give you too many options and too many difficult explanations for those options, and it often overwhelms both students and teachers. I'm telling you it's fluff. Ignore it. All you need to know how to do is how to analyze documents and write a good historical essay. This is what I've been teaching my students for years, and we have done very well on those written questions. So hopefully the following advice will help you. Now for the DBQ and especially the other types of questions, it is critically important to know the key concepts, especially when you're trying to write about outside pieces of evidence. What the key concepts are is a large list of themes and topics across time provided by the College Board, and you need specific pieces of evidence to prove or go with each of those key concepts. Additionally, you have to know how those key concepts and specific pieces of evidence compare across the various periods of time that they draw out in the historical themes. Now, the way you can earn each of the seven points are as follows. You have one point for contextualization, which ideally comes in the introduction paragraph, one point for a valid thesis statement that is ideally three points, however it can vary. And you're also gonna have three points for the use of evidence. Now that's mostly gonna come from the documents themselves. However, you are required to provide one from your own knowledge of history that is not involved in the documents. And lastly, you're going to have two points for analysis and reasoning, which is essentially you discussing the various historical skills and comparing your topic to similar topics in other parts of the world or different times. Now, while there are some nuanced other ways to get these points, those are the most simple. And again, I would really, really, really suggest that you focus on simplicity here here, as the uh, options and details provided by the College Board are far too difficult and complex uh, to keep track of. So first you focus on the context in the introduction paragraph. And to do that, you are going to find whatever the theme is of your question. So it could be political, it could be economic, it could be social, whatever the overall topic is, you want to explain that in the context. Because the context is there to sort of explain how or why the event in question is occurring when it's occurring and how. So for example, if we use the old DBQ from the German Peasant Revolt in AP Euro a few years ago, that's taking place in 1524 in Germany. So what I'm going to explain is a couple of things that are going on at that time that are related to the topic. Now the topic itself, the Peasant Revolt, is a political topic. So what I want to establish in my introduction, in my context, is what sort of governments exist at that time. The answer to that, roughly speaking, is feudalism. So I would explain that there are feudal kingdoms at the time, you have events like the Protestant Reformation that have inspired uh, Protestants to question their governments. And that, of course, is going to be what leads to the German Peasant Revolt. So that three, four, five sentences before my thesis statement in the introduction paragraph, that is setting the scene. So again, determine political, economic, social, whatever it is, you're going to explain what led to the development of the event or person or idea. That is the actual question. Now, after procuring your point for contextualization, you will want to focus on a valid thesis statement. Now, the thesis statement should be, roughly speaking, an answer to whatever the question is. And this is, this is something that confuses a lot of students, and that's the most simple way I can put it. If you read your thesis statement, and it completely answers whatever the question is, that should be a valid thesis statement as long as you understood what the question was. So for example, in the German peasant uh, revolt question from a few years ago in AP Euro, they asked for the causes and responses of the actual peasant revolt itself. So my thesis statement should provide 
a cause, at least one cause, and whatever the responses were by the people to that actual peasant revolt. It should be a general answer to the question. If it is not answering completely all the points of that question, it is not going to be a valid thesis statement. Now the thesis, especially for a DBQ, should be largely drawn from the documents, which is actually good news for most people because you don't even need to know what the actual event or person or idea may be. You can actually pull all the information you need to write a good essay from those documents. So what you'll want to do is read the documents, sort of note what they all mean, roughly speaking, and use that information to construct your thesis. For the, uh, again, for the German Peasant Rebellion, uh, it was caused, and you get this all from the documents, it was caused by Luther's ideas on scripture as authority, so that would be your, your first point, your cause, and the responses were, in general, Catholic and Protestant nobles opposed the revolt, while the German Protestant peasants, of course, supported it. And that, right there, is a valid thesis statement. It provided the cause, Luther's ideas on scripture, it provided the um, responses in opposition from the nobility and support by the peasantry, and that was, roughly speaking, an answer to the question. Now, after you've established that valid thesis statement, your following body paragraphs, which should be ideally three, should follow each point of that thesis statement. So my first paragraph should be all about whatever the cause was of the peasant rebellion, in this case, Luther's ideas. The second paragraph should be all about the uh, opposition by the nobility, and the third paragraph should be about the support of the Protestant peasants. Now, to get those points, I need Need specific examples. I need to use at least and cite at least six documents to get one of the evidence points. Additionally, I have to explain for at least three documents how those support my argument. So if I'm talking about opposition from the nobility, I should at least have two or three documents that sort of overtly oppose that German peasant revolt. And I should mention that in there. Uh, writing, of course, Wherever I paraphrase or mention a document, at the end I would put in parentheses doc1, doc2, doc3, whatever document it actually was. And if you do that throughout all three body paragraphs, using six and explaining at least three and how they support your argument, that will get you two out of the three points for your evidence. The other one is going to come, of course, from any historical example that you can think of on your own that isn't in the documents that also supports your uh, thesis statement. For example, to get that outside information point, if it is not in the documents, you could use the printing press invented by Johann Gutenberg in the 15th century, and you could explain that as a contributing factor uh, to causing the German peasant revolts, because that printing press got Luther's ideas out, spread throughout Europe, uh, and these peasants were able to get a hold of those ideas, read them, and apply them, and of course, that contributed to starting the German peasant revolt of 1524. As for the analysis and reasoning portions, the best ways to get those points are first to provide the either purpose, the point of view of the author, or the intended audience of the author for three documents. There are other ways to get this, but that is by far the most simple way to do it because it's very easy to read a document and try to understand who the author is talking to, what their message is, or why they wrote the document, and then explain that. So you're going to have to cite specific examples from these uh, documents. Of course, paraphrasing. I would not suggest quoting. You're going to paraphrase what they said and, of course, analyze what the purpose of that document was, or what the point of view of that document was, or what the intended audience, or who the intended audience for that document is going to be. And again, you're going to relate that to whatever your argument is. You're not just randomly providing that information throughout the essay. It should be relevant to your argument in some sense, and that is worth one point right there. The last point, just like the LEQ, can be earned in the conclusion paragraph, which again is not a summary of all the points of the essay. That is a terrible way to use your conclusion paragraph. The way you should use your conclusion paragraph is to connect whatever the event is, in this case the German Peasant Rebellion, to another time or era in history. So it could be what it helped lead to, like some of the conflicts of the religious wars in Europe, for example, or you could compare it to another revolt that was also started by religious ideas, like if you're in AP World, for example, compare it to maybe the uh, Yellow Turban Rebellion uh, with the Taoists and the Han Dynasty. All of those would be relevant comparisons, either of what it led to later in time or how it was similar to other events in time. Now, while there are many videos that elaborate on how to earn all of the points and explain what all of the points are for the DBQ and the LAQ, hopefully this much more simplified approach uh, provided you with some advice that will help your scores on the actual AB test. And again, if you are looking for uh, tutoring or my specific examples on how to address the various types of DBQ questions or the format that I give my students to perform well on the AP test, feel free to check out my website, which is linked below at morganapteaching.com. 
Thanks for watching and good luck on the AP test.